breaking news. Will non-compete agreements become legal? Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of Larry Financial. On today's show, we're gonna be discussing a January 5th, 2023 Federal Trade Commission proposed rule about banning employers from using non-compete clauses on employees. This is kind of breaking news. The FTC is uh, sticking their neck out into an area that many didn't think uh, they would uh, travel in. But where we are now is they are seeking comments over the next 60 or so days for public comments on their proposed rule, which I will discuss in a couple minutes, but banning non-competes which is pretty uh, significant for uh, small businesses all the way up to Fortune 500 companies that want to make sure that they are um, doing what they can to um, you know, keep their key employees from going out and uh, taking all the institutional knowledge, trade secrets, secret sauce of the companies they're working for and sharing it with competitors. So non-competes are very, very common um, in Against all widespread types of businesses, different industries uh, across the board. So having the FTC essentially ban them is uh, a massive rule. Um, just the outset, I don't think it's ever going to go anywhere, uh, but they are kind of serious about it. They're looking for comments. Um, it's not a congressional rule. They do have the authority uh, to make rules. So what is the FTC? Well, the FTC is the federal rulemaking authority. Um, they have the ability to issue industry-wide regulations, rules, and guides to deal with common unfair or deceptive practices and unfair methods of competition, right? So you go to the FTC and file a complaint if a company is uh, doing unfair uh, advertising um, you know, or unfair um, actions that are disrupting an industry, uh, a sector of an industry, um, or just even your business, or uh, even um, to the mass consumer. So it's a very important um, government agency. But for them to dip their toes in, in this is, um, you know, it's pretty bold. So let's talk about the rule for a second. I'm sure everyone um, listening or watching has heard of what a non compete is, right? You may have signed one yourself. Some companies don't even give you an option if you want to work for them whether you're in sales or engineering, marketing, you may uh, be forced to sign a non-compete as part of your employment uh, package where you're essentially saying that maybe it's for 12 months, maybe for six months, 18 months, 36 months, whatever the case may be, you will not compete with a hopefully narrow scope of companies or industry type players. Um, and, and in some cases, the non-competes are even restricted by geography. Let's say you live in Texas, you can't compete with companies that are uh, offices in Texas or uh, in the Southwest or Southeast. So it's courts have struck down non-competes that are overly broad, you know, i.e. seven years, you can't work in this industry anywhere in the world, right? That's probably not going to uh, survive court challenge. But 12 months, you can't um, compete in the coffee business because you are a coffee, if you sell coffee, in uh, I don't know, the state of New York, and this company wants to restrict you from working with competitors in the coffee industry, maybe in the Northeast or in New York, it's probably gonna hold up a court. So uh, what's this rule all about? Okay, again, it just came out uh, January 5th, so it's quite new. There's 60 day common period, which is happening now. Um, and after the rule is published in the Federal Register, there's gonna probably be many comments on this, okay? This is gonna be a hot topic for uh, business owners, lawyers, um, and, and the like that are gonna to wanna to have some comments. Because the right now, this proposed rule is super broad. Uh, we'll see it applies to 25% or greater. There's exceptions, I should say, for 25% or greater owners. So you can do non-competes if you buy someone business more than 25%. But there is no exception for key employees, right, or executives. So um, that's probably going to be a common area that many will talk to and say, hey, OK, you want to maybe prohibit non-competes for rank and file employees, but you have to have some type of exceptions for you know, executives, key employees, things like that. Um, so let's talk about the facts. This proposal defines a non-compete clause as a contractual term 
between an employer and a worker that prevents the worker from seeking or accepting employment with a person or operating a business after the conclusion of the worker's employment with the employer. Okay, so that's a non-compete. Non-disclosures and non-solicitations will not be impacted, it seems. Okay, it's only a non-compete. So non-disclosure basically means if you work at company X and you go to company Y, you can't spill all company X's secrets to company Y. And non-solicitation essentially says if you go from company X to company Y, you can't solicit employees at company X to go to company Y. Those provisions will remain intact. They are not subject to attack by this FTC non-compete rule. Okay. Um, so what about trying to bury a non-compete uh, provision in a non-solicitation or non-disclosure agreement? Um, that's very common these days. And this rule would prevent that because it would basically say, you cannot force or even have employees sign non-competes, even if you stick it in a non-solicitation or non-disclosure agreement. Okay, so what about existing non-competes? What do we do? I have a non-compete with you know Jane or Sally. Uh, what do we do? So this is you know pretty controversial. The rule states that an employer that enters into a non-compete with a worker prior to the compliance date must rescind. You got to stop the non-compete clause no later than the compliance date. You got to give notice to the workers that the non-compete is no longer in effect within 45 days of rescinding the non-compete of, of, of the rule actually being rescinded. OK, so that means if you signed a non-compete with an employee a year ago, two years ago, once this rule, if it's ever uh, finalized and becomes law within 45 days, you got to tell the workers, uh, guess what? You're free. You can do whatever you want. I can't restrict you to compete. Um, I mentioned there's an exception for 25% owners of businesses. So a non-complete cause would be allowed for a seller of a business that owned 25% or more of a business. Okay, so obviously it's quite common in sale agreements um, to include non-competes for the executives, the seller, so they don't just sell their business and go the next morning and open a new business and compete directly against you. That would be crazy and that would stop a lot of m and right? If I was buying a... Uh, uh, furniture business and uh suddenly the guy i'm buying it from could open the store next to me tomorrow and, and just keep compete with me that's not going to uh you know entice people to uh you know enter into m a transactions so that's going to be allowed but if you buy 10 percent, you can still there there would be no not compete and again i mentioned key employees executives things like that um someone that's maybe a cto or a Chief marketing officer, growth revenue officer, um, can't be a non-compete. So they'll be able to go to your competitor the next day. Now, yes, you can still get disclosures, uh, not solicitation, on disclosures, which will add some protection, but you're not going to be able to stop them from competing. Um, so basically, the, CF, the CTC is not saying that non-competes on its face are invalid. They're basically saying that they're an unfair method of competition. We don't like it, right? It's unfair because you're restricting people's freedom. You're restricting people's ability to go out and earn a living. Um, and we're going to stop them. And I'll push back on that because, again, I think the courts, and I don't have enough time to kind of go through various case law uh, on non-competes, but it's out there. If you if you Google non-competes case law, you'll see courts are, are you know, pretty consistent that they will respect non-competes that are fair and narrow. Uh, as I mentioned, like 12 months, you can't compete, you know, in the coffee industry in maybe a certain state or a region, but they're not going to allow non-competes for seven years, five years in a lot of cases, where you can't, um, if you're, let's say, a software engineer, you, know, you can't go get a software engineering job for five years. That will never hold up. But they may say you can't work for a competitor in the you know, AI fields uh, in this particular space this particular area for a year. Three or four or five years, I agree, would not hold up in court. So I'm not sure the FTC actually has to do anything because the courts will protect it. So as I mentioned, um, you know, they're focused on unfair methods of competition, right? And they believe this unfair method of competition, the FTC does, is affecting commerce and um, is deceptive. And I'm not sure I agree. I think it's a, um, a broad push by the, the FTC to get more relevant. I don't think there's a huge need for it. I think comments, period, you're going to see a lot of businesses, small, medium, and large push back and say, hey, 
we need this. We got to protect ourselves. Uh, we can't have our key employees um, going out and competing with us and, and, and um, you know, doing that right away. Um, FTC will push back and say, well, you got non-disclosures, you got non-solicitation, so they can't really give up your secret sauce. All they can do is get a job with a competitor. What's wrong with that? Um, Non-competes have been around for a long time, right? So for the FTC to come in right now and try to ban him, for anyone that's uh, owns less than 25% of a business um, and essentially everyone, uh, other than anyone that owns more than 25% of a business, uh, I'm not sure that's going to fly. I don't think the Supreme Court will go along with it. It will certainly get challenged. So what's going to happen? So there'll be a comment period, right? And then there's another 180 days or so where they can, uh, FTC can, can gather uh, information and uh, come up with uh, you know, further guidance. Um, and then essentially they could promulgate a rule, a law. Um, but what will happen then is it's going to get challenged, right? You're going to get uh, someone, a business or someone that's going to challenge the uh, law. And then it's going to be up to the courts, right? A lot of, if we see kind of how the Supreme Court's been ruling, whether it's abortion or different areas, um, they basically want Congress to make laws, not necessarily federal agencies. Um, and they want Congress to make these laws. So they're, they're probably going to push back and say, hey, FTC, yeah, you may have jurisdiction on this, but we'd rather Congress make these types of laws because it's going to impact interstate commerce. You know, we feel that that's um, something that Congress should have some uh, input on. And then the FTC will push back and say, no, that is our jurisdiction. We're allowed to make these rules. We've done it in the past. We've made rules that, um, for example, you know, dealt with, um, you know, the internet or um, certain um, practices involving, um, you know, child online privacy or different um, rules that impact federal commerce. This is just another byproduct of that. So there's no reason we can't do it. We're, we're able to do it, right? Our charter allows us to have federal rulemaking authority to issue industry-wide regulations, rules and guides, rules is the key word, to deal with common unfair or deceptive practices. The question is, is it common unfair or deceptive? I'm not sure a non-compete is an unfair or deceptive practice. Now the employee may say, it is unfair. I'm receiving no value in return. I have to sign this thing, right? There's nothing I'm receiving in return for signing this non-compete, right? Usually when you enter into a contract, um, there's generally some quid pro quo, right? I'm providing something and I'm receiving something. Here, you could say, well, you're getting employment. And you may say, well, I'm forced to sign this thing. It's not fair. It's deceptive. And that's what the FTC is saying. It's saying, sign non-disclosure, sign non-solicitation. That I understand why a business would want you to do that. Non-compete seems overly broad and deceptive and you are potentially impacting interstate commerce. And then a company will say, no, that's not true. We're protecting ourselves protecting m a protecting interstate commerce because without having these non-competes it's going to be a wild wild west and a, a, it's going to be impossible to you know retain employees now if i was the ftc and i was going to fight back on that i'd say well there's other ways to retain employees like deferred comp uh equity options right there's other ways to keep employees happy saying okay um you gotta if you stay with us x amount of times and you don't go compete with these types of companies, you know, you can draft these not these um, bonus pools or deferred comp uh, in a way where you can basically say, even if you leave us, so long as you're not employed for competitors, you can still get a percentage of this um, you know, deferred comp or uh, equity pool or something like that. So um, employment attorneys, ERISA attorneys will get um, creative. And if this rule ever does pass and finding ways, that's an not in the non-compete world for retaining um, employees. So it's breaking because this is pretty big stuff. It's I haven't don't think it's gotten the publicity it deserves. I haven't seen it in a lot of uh, you know, the Wall Street Journal hasn't done much on it. Um, it's surprising because this is you know a rule that will impact, as I mentioned, uh, small, mid-sized, large, and super large businesses um, in all different uh, fashions. 
Um, and there's going to be a wide variety of opinions on it, you know, from both sides. So it's going to be interesting how this comment period um, uh, persists. And then obviously the 180 days after that, um, they have 180 days to basically set a compliance uh to set the, the rule up and finalize the rule. So we'll see what happens. Even if the rule does get finalized and becomes law, uh, I definitely think this will go to the Supreme Court for sure. Um, and we'll see where the Supreme Court goes, but it's gonna cause a big mess because let's say you have to, the rule becomes law. So you have 45 days to rescind the non-compete. So now you go to John and Jane, say, hey guys, sorry, non-competes, it's not enforceable anymore. And then it's eight months later, or a year later, the Supreme Court says, well, actually, it is enforceable. This rule isn't enforceable. So go back to your non-compete. Do you think John and Jane's going to sign the non-compete? They're going to be like, no, I'm not signing this now. <laughs> Forget it. I'm already employed. You need me. Forget about it. I ain't signing this thing. So there's going to be more aggravation. And it may, even if the rule doesn't get finalized, it may kill non-competes because maybe some employees will push back and say, look, the FTC doesn't like it. Um, this thing will become law. Why are you forcing me to sign it? It's unfair. The FTC says they believe it's deceptive. It's an unfair method of competition. Um, I'm not signing. And we'll see where it goes. But I definitely thought this was an important uh, topic to discuss on, on today's show. Um, and, and I'll definitely keep you in the loop in the next couple months. Um, not sure we'll hear back after initially after the common period ends, but uh, maybe they will uh, provide an updated rule based off comments, like key employees, executives are included, things like that. Um, I'm not sure. Personally, as I mentioned, I don't think there's a need for this rule. Uh, I think the courts do a good enough job uh, policing it. And um, I, But I do think the FTC probably does have jurisdiction. Uh, we'll see how the Supreme Court, if it ever does get to the Supreme Court, uh, because the rule becomes law, we'll see how they adjudicate it. But based on what they've done in the, over the last year or so, as the court uh, is taking more of a federalist approach, um, I think they'll probably say, hey, uh, we think this is a, a law that Congress should uh, promulgate, not not you guys. So we're gonna kick it back and um, invalidate it. So to be continued, super interesting. Um, and again, thanks uh, for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you as well. Uh, appreciate you guys spending some time with me. Super super important topic, especially if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, small, mid-sized, large, like this will impact all of us. Um, so either way, again, even if it doesn't pass, employees may push back on uh, non-competes being part of non-disclosure or non-solicitation agreement. So it's interesting. It's not really tax law, uh, which is kind of the area I like to talk about on the podcast, tax law term assets, retirement stuff, but I thought this was just too important to ignore. So um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, have a great, great, great day. This is a weekly podcast, as you probably know, it drops every Wednesday. So um, check it out. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, you definitely should. Um, great content. If you're interested in alternative assets, self-directed, solo case, and uh, leave a comment. Uh, I, I promise I, I go through the comments and I will uh, do my best to get through all them uh, as quick as possible. So thanks again for spending uh, your time with me today. I appreciate it. Have an amazing day.